Warning, this video may be disturbing, but you're gonna watch it anyway. Imagine systems that are many times smarter than us could defeat our cybersecurity, um, could hire you know, organized crime to do things, could even hire people who are legally working on the web to do things, could open bank accounts, um, could do all kinds of things uh, just through the internet. And, and eventually do the R&D to build robots and, and have it its own like control, direct control in the world. On November 17th, 2023, Sam Altman was fired by the board at OpenAI. Why was he fired? What exactly did he do? What was the full story behind this? Now, this was months ago, and there are plenty of articles and YouTube videos on this already, but I really wanted to make a very detailed video on this topic. I'm going to get really deep in the weeds and give you all the details of what happened and everyone involved. I'll give you the full timeline, plus new information has surfaced since that time, which might have changed what we previously thought. Just a warning though, what you're about to learn might be disturbing and shocking. Let's rewind to sometime before November 17th. Sam Altman had to have done something to get fired. The board wouldn't just fire him if he did nothing. So what could that thing be? We'll get back to this in a second. Now, fast forward to November 16th. The board has made the decision to fire Sam Altman the next day. So they inform Mira Murati, OpenAI's CTO, Chief Technology Officer, that she will become interim CEO the next day. And then Ilya Suskever, the chief scientist at OpenAI, who had been in the know of the board's decision this whole time, sends Sam a text to schedule a call the next day to inform him of the board's decision. And this brings us to the first character of the story. Who exactly is Ilya Suskever? Ilya is one of the most cited AI scientists in the world, if not the most cited. He's the top 1% of the 1% of AI scientists. And before, he was a research scientist at Google Brain. This was a research division at Google dedicated to artificial intelligence. Google Brain later became DeepMind. Ilya was part of the team that created TensorFlow, which allows for neural networks to be used by the public. At the very start of OpenAI, it was basically Sam Altman and Elon Musk who teamed up together to form this new AI company to compete with Google, who at that time was the obvious leader in AI, and so these two, of course, didn't want Google to have a monopoly in the AI space, which could be very dangerous. So I believe it was Elon who actually convinced Ilya to leave Google and join OpenAI as co-founder and chief scientist. Note that many of the founders at that time, including Sam Altman, Elon Musk, and Greg Brockman, who I'll talk about in a second, they weren't experts in AI at that time. So one could say that it was Ilya who was the brains behind this technology at OpenAI. He was really the guy who built this technology. So going back to the timeline here, it was Ilya who sent a text to Sam to schedule a call the next day. So fast forward to November 17th, 2023, the board of directors get on a call with Sam Altman. And funny thing is they used Google Meets, even though Microsoft is like the biggest investor in OpenAI. They own 49% of the company. They used Google Meet instead of Microsoft Teams, which just shows you how great Microsoft Teams is. So they informed Sam that he was going to be fired that day. Microsoft CEO Satya Nitella also allegedly wasn't informed about this decision until like a few hours before they publicly announced it. All right, so after the board got on a call with Sam, they released this article on the website. The media picks it up and everyone goes crazy. The board claims that they fired Sam Altman because, quote unquote, he was not consistently candid in his communications with the board and that the current CTO Mira Murati will step up as the interim CEO. Here's a tweet by Greg Brockman, one of the co-founders of OpenAI, who I'll talk more about in a second, but here's what he tweeted on that day. Sam and I are shocked and saddened by what the board did today. We're still trying to figure out what exactly happened. Here is what we know. Last night, Sam got a text from Ilya asking to talk at noon Friday. Sam joined a Google Meet and the whole board except Greg was there. Ilya told Sam he was being fired, and the news was going out soon. So everything happened at a very short time frame. At 12.19, Greg got a text from Ilya asking for a quick call. At around 12.30, Ilya sent a Google Meet link. Greg was told he was being removed from the board, but he was vital to the company and he would retain his role. 
At the time, Greg Brockman was the chairman of the board. As far as we know, the management team was made aware of this shortly after, other than Mira, who found out the night before. So you can see pretty much everyone besides the board and Ilya and Mira, everyone else didn't see this coming at all. This was quite a shock to them. Sam later released this tweet on the same day. I loved my time at OpenAI. It was transformative for me personally and hopefully the world a little bit. Most of all, I loved working with such talented people. We'll have more to say about what's next later. Sam also tweets this. I love you all. Today was a weird experience in many ways, but one unexpected one is that it has been sort of like reading your own eulogy while you're alive, etc, etc. I love you all. This sentence seems kind of out of place, but if you string the first letters together, you get Ilya, chief scientist and the guy who scheduled the call with him the previous day. So was this intentional? That's up to you to decide. Now, of course, at this stage, everyone in the tech industry was super confused and surprised and shocked. And it was just wild speculation at that time. What exactly did Sam do that caused him to get fired so suddenly? Maybe this was a marketing stunt. Maybe this was a joke. Or it must have been something really bad that he did. But the only response that the board gave was Sam was not consistently candid in his communications. That's all we got, nothing more. And we couldn't really find anything bad that Sam Altman did previously. Some people were speculating that it might be related to this post from Sam's sister, Annie Altman, who accused her brothers of sexual assault. Here she writes, I experienced sexual, physical, emotional, verbal, financial, and a ton of abuse, basically, from my biological siblings, mostly Sam Altman, and some from Jack Altman. However, this was really unlikely to getting Sam fired, because it wasn't really tied to what OpenAI was doing. It wasn't really tied to the interest of the board of directors. A few hours later, and keep in mind, we are still on November 17th. This is all happening on the same day. Greg tweets out this. After learning today's news, this is the message I sent to the OpenAI team. Hi everyone, I'm super proud of what we've all built together since starting in my apartment eight years ago. We've been through tough times together, etc, etc. But based on today's news, I quit. So, alright, this was shocking. So not only was Sam Altman fired now, the number two guy, co-founder and chairman of the board, Greg Brockman, also quits with Sam. And this brings us to our next character in the story, Greg Brockman. Who on earth is Greg Brockman? Greg was born in 1987 in North Dakota, USA. He went to MIT and began his career at Stripe in 2010. In 2013, he became their CTO. So just think on that for a second. In the short span of three years, he joined Stripe, which is now a unicorn, and he was promoted to CTO, Chief Technology Officer. So this guy must have something, you know, some leadership or technical abilities to be able to achieve that. And in 2015, Sam Altman and Elon Musk, they were planning this startup called OpenAI to compete with Google's DeepMind, and Sam Altman brought in Greg Brockman to be one of the co-founders. So Greg left Stripe to join OpenAI as the founding team, along with Ilya Suskover and a few other founding members. A quick fun story about Greg is that when they first teamed up, Greg knew pretty much nothing about AI. He was a software developer, and keep in mind, software development and machine learning are two completely different things. So he asked Ilya, all right, what's the number one textbook I should read to learn about machine learning? And so Ilya told him the textbook, he immediately bought it, and he studied it religiously. Greg Brockman is a beast, like he, he's one of those 1% of 1% of tech guys who are just relentless in learning and building cool stuff. If you're interested in seeing the early days of OpenAI and how they worked together to form a team to build everything, Greg Brockman actually has his own blog where he shares a lot of stories and photos of the early days. So if you're into that, I would definitely recommend you check that out. I will link to this blog in the description below. All right, so back to our timeline of events here. We are still on November 17th, 2023. But now the narrative did 180 degree flip. The public opinion now was, wait a minute, now Greg is on Sam's side. If whatever Sam did was that bad, Greg would not just quit with him, unless Greg was in on this too. But just given the character of Greg Brockman, it doesn't seem like he's the irrational kind of guy to do this. So it doesn't seem like Sam is totally in the wrong here. Is there some kind of power play or what's going on? So 
As this public opinion of Sam Altman shifted to the positive side of things, more and more tweets were coming out of people who Sam had worked with in the past. So before OpenAI, Sam was president of Y Combinator, the world's best startup accelerator. A lot of tech giants came out of Y Combinator, including Stripe, Airbnb, Coinbase, Dropbox, Twitch, and many more. So suddenly we're getting tons of these tweets from previous founders at Y Combinator who shared how Sam went to bat for them. Sam had swooped in to help them and they didn't even know it at that time. Sam was doing all of this behind the scenes and they only found out later. So here's one example. Here's one by Parker Conrad. When I was attacked relentlessly by Post Zenovitz, Sam Altman went to my previous investors and put himself on the line to stop it. I didn't know he was doing it until after it happened. There are so many stories of him swooping in to help others. Hope he gets tons of support. So, you know, Sam Altman was going to war for these YC founders behind the scenes. This guy didn't even know it at that time. He only found out later. Here's another example. Sam Altman has always been incredibly kind to me and gone out of his way to help me. Sad day. And here's another one. When Sam Altman was president of YC, he stepped into a situation where another alum was saying untruthful things about me. I sent him a Facebook message asking for help. He responded within five minutes and got on the phone with our investors to de-escalate. He's an absolute class act. Here's another one. Sam Altman might be the greatest external force behind me becoming an entrepreneur. Four years ago, I randomly met John Levy from YC who introduced me to Sam. He somehow found the time for a call where he politely listened to me, rambled about gene genetics, and even made some intros after. It was the first time in my life I began to seriously believe I could build a company. I wish Sam luck in his next endeavor. Here's another one. I have no inside information about the situation at OpenAI, but I just wanted to say how kind and generous Sam Altman has been with his help, his time, and his support. He has selflessly helped so many throughout the years. So there's a ton of these posts that are kind of praising Sam. It's kind of like his funeral where, you know, people are just saying nice things that he did, kind stories about him. So suddenly with all these kind tweets about Sam, just given his character, there's no way he would have committed something so bad that he could have gotten fired from the board. So again, this points to the speculation. Is this just some power play or some jealousy or what's going on? People were demanding the board for an explanation. All this time, the board kept silent. The only response was he was quote unquote, not consistently candid in his communications. All right, so that was November 17th, a lot going on already. Now we enter the weekend. So on November 18th, now OpenAI's employees were demanding the board to explain their explanations as well. Like, you don't have to say it publicly, but say it internally. Tell us why you fired our leader. If it was something that bad, we would understand, but you got to explain yourselves. You've not only taken out one leader, but two leaders, right? Sam and Greg Brockman are now leaving. So, I mean, what do you mean by he wasn't consistently candid? What exactly did he do? Again, throughout this time, the board remained silent, and they just said he was not candid with the board. All right, so you might be wondering, wait a minute, who on earth is even on this board of directors? How could they just fire the CEO suddenly? So really quickly, let's go into details on these people. The chairman at that time was Greg Brockman, who we already talked about. Another guy on the board is Adam D'Angelo, former CTO of Facebook and now CEO of Quora. So you might argue that this guy has some technical knowledge, but I'm not sure if he actually knows about or was involved in these AI projects at OpenAI. And then we have Helen Toner, who we later learned that she was the one behind this coup to fire Sam Altman. She was the one who orchestrated the whole thing, not Ilya. So who on earth is Helen Toner? She's an Australian researcher born in 1992 in Melbourne, Australia. After graduating, she worked with GiveWell and Open Philanthropy. After that, she worked as research affiliate at the University of Oxford's Center for the Governance of AI. And then after that, she became director of strategy at Georgetown's Center for Security and Emerging Technology, which is a very long name, so we can also call it CSET. So from her work experience and track record, it seems she has deep expertise in AI policy and strategy. In late 2021, Helen was appointed to the board of OpenAI. Interestingly, Helen is part of the effective altruism movement, which focuses on using resources for charity and ethical development. 
Ironically, Sam Bankman-Fried, founder of the massive crypto exchange FTX, which was later found to be fraudulent and he's now in jail, you can see from his smile that he's really having a wonderful time in jail right now. He was also part of this effective altruism movement. Now, I'm not saying this has anything to do with Helen Toner. I'm just pointing out a fun fact. Also on this board is Tasha McCauley, who is pretty much a nobody. She has remained very quiet and low-key throughout this time, and people mostly know her as the wife of Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who starred in 500 Days of Summer. So not a super famous actor, but you might have seen his face somewhere before. And finally, on this board, we have Ilya Suskover, one of the most cited AI scientists in the world, and the brains behind OpenAI. So out of these five board members, it seems like Ilya was the only one who really had skin in the game. Maybe Ilya and Greg Brockman. These two were the only ones involved in actually building OpenAI. So at that time, the court of public opinion started hating the board of directors. They're like, these schmucks are just some academics who weren't even involved in building the technology. They had no skin in the game. The whole board had misaligned incentives. Here's another one. The OpenAI board seems to have no actual skin in the game other than perhaps Ilya. There are at least three people who have no skin in the game on that board. Helen, Adam, and Tasha. These three had no involvement in actually building OpenAI. This is so irresponsible and immature as the board. They broke every single lesson in the startup world, comms world, and the investor world. What a shame. So, you know, the board isn't giving off a very good impression right now. There was also some negative sentiment towards Ilya since he scheduled the call with Sam. And people thought that at that time, he was the one who led this coup to fire Sam Altman. Now, to be fair, we later learned that it was not likely Ilya who led the coup. It was originally Helen Turner who orchestrated everything. And Ilya was actually initially on Sam's side, but later changed to support Helen after something happened. What was the something that happened? In fact, after this event, there are some memes coming out that have the text, What did Ilya see? What exactly did he see that spooked him so much that he joined Helen Toner's side to fire Sam Altman? We'll go into a lot more details on that in a second. But basically, I'm just mentioning it was Helen Toner, as we know today, who orchestrated everything. So let's cut Ilya some slack here. And at that time, the employees were getting more and more pissed. They were demanding the board to give an explanation, if not publicly, then at least internally. And this tweet went viral. People or employees of OpenAI kept tweeting this. OpenAI is nothing without its people. And funny enough, Mira Mirati, former CTO and now interim CTO, has joined this gang. So even she doesn't support the firing of Sam Altman. And it just gets worse. So rumors came out that Sam and Greg are going to start a new AI company by Monday. So the board is in a really fecal position right now. They've lost their two leaders. Their employees are supporting Sam Altman. Even the interim CEO is with Sam. They're in a really fecal situation. All right, so the board starts scrambling. They start renegotiating with Sam. They invite Sam back to do some renegotiation. So here's a famous tweet of Sam using a guest pass to visit the OpenAI office. He tweets out that this is the first and last time I ever wear one of these. And Sam's like, all right, my conditions are this. You've got to bring back Greg as well, and y'all got to resign. We're going to form a new board. So obviously the board doesn't want to do that. And then there's some back and forth, back and forth, but, you know, the board doesn't want to resign. So fast forward to Sunday night, November 19th, some crazy news comes out. Emmett Shear, former CEO of Twitch, is now the CEO at OpenAI. What? Like, Emmett is great, but he's the CEO of Twitch, a streaming company for gamers. To become the CEO of OpenAI, the world's leading AI company, that seems a bit out of place. But anyways, that's what the board announced. Emmett Shear will be the CEO of OpenAI. And everyone thought that was the end. Sam is out. Emmett is the new CEO of OpenAI. But nope, it's not even close to being over. So really early the next day on Monday morning, chaos happens. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella announced that Sam Altman and Greg Brockman were both joining Microsoft to lead a new advanced AI research team. Just look at the smiles on their faces. So naturally, Microsoft's stock price soared that day and everyone just goes wild. Microsoft 
already has most if not all of the internal data of OpenAI. They have pretty much unlimited money, unlimited hardware, and now Sam and Greg are joining forces with Microsoft. They basically removed any non-profit limitations of OpenAI, and now it's 100% for profit. Checkmate. To make matters even worse, also early that morning, over 500 out of the 700 OpenAI employees signed this letter threatening to resign and join Microsoft. Unless the board resigns. So it was like over 500 in early morning and then an hour later as more people started waking up, it was over 600 of the 700 employees. So here's what they say. We may choose to resign from OpenAI and join the newly announced Microsoft subsidiary run by Sam and Greg. Microsoft has assured us that there are positions for all OpenAI employees, should we choose to join. We'll take this step imminently unless all current board members resign. So now the employees, over 600 of the 700 employees, are threatening to resign if the board doesn't resign and bring Sam and Greg back. And again, funny thing is, look who's on the list. Mira Mirati, the interim CEO, and now she's back at CTO, with Emmett Shear being the CEO. And not only that, oh, look what we have here. Number 12 is Ilya Suskover. So the guy allegedly who was supporting Helen in firing Sam Altman now has switched sides and has signed this letter. Oops. Checkmate number two. Also on that same morning, Ilya tweets this. I deeply regret my participation in the board's actions. I never intended to harm OpenAI. I love everything we've built together and I will do everything I can to reunite the company. So he's feeling apologetic. He regrets what he's done. He wants to get the gang back together. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Upix. If you're feeling overwhelmed with mid-journey or stable diffusion, you don't want to worry about prompting or learning all these different settings, well, Upix has made it dead easy for you to generate high-quality, realistic images of yourself or anyone else in just one click. It works on desktop as well as on your phone. You don't need to install any apps or anything, it just works straight from your internet browser. Simply select a template, and then upload your photo, and then click Create. It's as easy as that. And look how realistic the results are. There's many templates for you to choose from and more to come. So check it out at upix.app. So the board at OpenAI, not so much Greg and Ilya, but the rest of the board members are in a really big stinking pile of fecal matter right now. Not only has their two top leaders, Greg and Sam, left to join Microsoft, which owns everything, almost all of the employees are threatening to leave including chief scientist Ilya Suskover and CTO Mira Mirati. In other words, the board had literally nothing left. There was news that the board had approached Dario Amodei at that time. He was the CEO of OpenAI competitor Anthropic about potentially merging companies. However, Dario declined and the board was once again screwed. So on the next day, on November 21st, OpenAI announces this. We have reached an agreement in principle for Sam to return to OpenAI as CEO with a new initial board of Brett Taylor, Larry Summers, and Adam D'Angelo, who I'll talk about in a second. So the board finally agrees to resign, and it seems like Sam Altman handpicked these three board members. Funny thing is this Elon Musk parody account, so this is not Elon Musk himself, it's some guy pretending to be him. He's like, you guys literally did this for nothing. Nice marketing stunt. So it seems like every Everyone on the board was kicked out except for Adam D'Angelo, who again is the CEO of Quora. All right, so here's some info on Brett Taylor. Brett Taylor was part of the team that co-created Google Maps. He now tenors as the CTO of Facebook, and he was once the chairman of Twitter's board prior to Elon Musk's acquisition. He's the co-CEO of Salesforce, and since 2023, he's also chairman of the OpenAI board and a board member of Shopify. And then this guy, Larry Summers, he was the U.S. Secretary of Treasury when Bill Clinton was president. Then he became president of Harvard University, and then when Barack Obama was president, he was director of the National Economic Council. So he's had a lot of really high-level prestigious positions. As you can see from this new OpenAI board, it's now very diverse and inclusive of all genders and ethnicities. Great job, everyone. OpenAI announced that Microsoft will also be on the board of directors in the form of a non-voting observer. 
An observer means that they have the right to attend board meetings and participate in board discussions, but they cannot vote. The observer has no voting rights. So later on January 5th, Microsoft announces that D. Templeton, VP for Tech and Research Partnerships at Microsoft, will now join the OpenAI board as an observer. So again, this guy can't vote, but he knows what's going on. He can go back to Satya and tell him what's going on behind the scenes at OpenAI. Because again, originally when Sam got fired, Satya was totally unaware of this until a few hours before the press release. So even he as, you know, the major investor in OpenAI, who owns 49% of the company, even he was caught completely off guard. So now Microsoft has someone to kind of attend these meetings, so at least they have a better idea of what's going on. So all right, it looks like everything is back to normal. Sam and Greg are now back at OpenAI. The employees haven't left. The previous board had been forced to resign and replaced with a new board. But wait a minute, what about the topic of today's video? Why did all of this even happen? What exactly did Sam Altman do that caused him to be fired in the first place? Or as the meme says, what did Il see that spooked him so much. First, let's understand the character of Sam Altman a bit more. Here are some interesting stories that I found about him. So if you remember, I mentioned that Sam Altman was president of Y Combinator, the world's top startup accelerator before starting OpenAI. And many of the top tech companies have come out of YC, including Stripe, Twitch, Airbnb, DoorDash, Instacart, etc. The co-founder of Y Combinator is Paul Graham. Now, here's what he had to say about Sam Altman. He says, you could parachute him into an island full of cannibals and come back in five years and he'd be the king. Sam is, along with Steve Jobs, the founder that I refer to the most when I'm advising startups. On questions of strategy or ambition, I ask, what would Sam do? So keep in mind, Paul Graham, he's the founder of YC. He's met tons and tons of these ambitious startup founders, founders of Airbnb, of Twitch, of Stripe, etc. Out of all the amazing people he has met, he thinks most highly of Sam Altman, and that's why he appointed him president after Paul resigned. That says something about Sam. And keep in mind, like, Sam is like a kid to Paul Graham. Sam is like 20 years younger. Paul also says, Sam is a very unusual guy. Within three minutes of meeting him, I remember thinking, ah, so this is what Bill Gates must have been like when he was 19. So how crazy is that? Within the first three minutes of meeting Sam Altman, this guy, Paul Graham, who has seen tons of startup founders, he was already impressed by Sam. So impressed that he thinks this must be the next Bill Gates. So Sam seems to be this super intelligent guy. He has incredible strategy and negotiation skills, and he's very ambitious. So could this whole fiasco be part of Sam's plan all along? to get rid of the existing board members, most of which are just concerned about strategy and policy, which might not necessarily align with the ambitions that Sam Altman has for OpenAI. There was also news that Sam was not impressed with a paper written by Helen Toner. Again, this is the previous board member who orchestrated all of this. She wrote this paper in October, which seemingly criticized OpenAI for a ton of things. In an interview with Helen, here's what she says. He confronted one member, Helen Toner, for co-writing a paper that criticized OpenAI for stoking the flames of AI hype. Altman began approaching other board members individually about replacing her. When these members compared notes about the conversation, some felt that Altman has misrepresented them as supporting Toner's removal. He'd play them off against each other by lying about what other people thought. So we don't know if this is true or not. Keep in mind, this is what Helen Toner says. She could be the one lying for all we know, but just be aware that this is out there. But even if this was true, this doesn't seem to be the reason he got fired. This is just some, you know, typical company politics. Definitely not enough to get Sam fired by the entire board. He must have done something really significant for the board members to reach such a decision. So what could that something be? Here's where we get into the juicy part of the video. On November 23rd, 2023, this document was leaked on 4chan. 4chan is like a Reddit, but where people can post anonymously. Now, just a warning, this is where we get into conspiracy territory. What I'm talking about here may or may not be true. Nothing has been verified. But this stirred up a lot of debate. So I'm going to first go over everything in this text, then we'll talk about 
the legitimacy. Is this real? Is this not real? What's the evidence to prove this? In my previous video, I talked briefly about this QSTAR document, but here's where I go into more details. So, all right, an anonymous person posted this on 4chan. The title is re colon and then Q with a code. So this appears to be a reply to an ongoing thread. The first paragraph is blanked out, and then it says, furthermore, Qualia, which we refer to as Q star, has demonstrated an ability to statistically significantly improve the way which it selects its optimal action selection policies in different deep Q networks, exhibiting metacognition. Now, what on earth does this mean? This seems to be a thread between the top people at OpenAI. So Qualia is the project name. We now refer to this as Q star. Deep Q learning is a type of reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is what was used to train AlphaGo, which beat the best Go player in the world. It's also used to beat the best chess players in the world. It's also used to master Mario and Pokemon and StarCraft and all these other video games. So how exactly does reinforcement learning work? At a very high level, we have the agent. This is basically the player or the user. This is the AI. And it can do certain actions in the game, right? So for example, in Pokemon, you can move up, down, left, right. In Go, you can place a piece wherever you want on the board. In chess, you can move any piece to a particular location on the chessboard. So there are certain actions that this agent can perform, and it can perform this in the environment. So the environment is the game, basically. It's a predefined set of rules where the agent operates in. So this is like the rules of chess, the rules of Go, the rules of StarCraft, or the rules of the stock market, for example. And then after it performs this action in the environment, it is given a reward plus a new state. So what this state is referring to is, let's say the AI is playing Pokemon and it moves one step to the left. The new state is basically one step to the left. And then now it moves one step up. So the new state is now one step up. In Mario, for example, if you move one step forward, then the new state is one step forward from the previous state. That's all there is to it. Now, reward is harder to define because there's like long-term rewards such as in chess, eating the king of your opponent is the long-term reward. But there are also shorter-term rewards such as just eating any piece of your opponent. And for example, eating the king would be more valuable. In other words, it would be a higher reward than eating a pawn, for example. So each action could consist of a reward or punishment even. So this is basically a feedback loop. You have an AI that basically takes random actions, but you iterate this over millions of times, and eventually it will learn the best action to take to get the highest reward. And so this is pretty much all there is to reinforcement learning. Now, generally, this model, the AI just learns what actions to take to get the highest long-term reward. However, what this document is claiming is that this Qualia AI model, which is a deep Q learning model, it somehow demonstrated the ability to select the policy as well. So going back to this diagram, the policy is how the agent determines what action to select next. So you can think of it as it's able to alter the psychology of its brain in order to learn faster, in order to select the optimal action. Or in other words, again, I'm just explaining this at a very high abstract level. If you think of this AI as a brain, what it means by selecting the policy is kind of like it can reconfigure the neurons in its brain to become a better brain. So not only is it learning, it can reconfigure itself. It can evolve over time. And so exhibiting metacognition means it's able to learn and improve itself over time. Moving on to the next sentence, it later demonstrated an unprecedented ability to apply this for accelerated cross-domain learning. So unprecedented, this was never seen before by the scientists. And then cross-domain learning, it is able to learn across different skills, different domains. So it's not only good at, for example, essay writing or image generation or data prediction, for example. It's able to learn across these different knowledge domains. And this is actually a key characteristic of AGI, which I talked about in this video. So, all right, these scientists 
found that this AI in this project, Qualia, was able to do some unprecedented stuff that they had never seen before. And then following an unsupervised learning session on an expanded ad hoc data set consisting of articles in descriptive inferential statistics and cryptanalysis, it analyzed millions of plain text and ciphertext pairs from various crypto systems. So what on earth does this sentence mean? It's like loaded with terminology. So to train this AI, they used a data set consisting of articles in statistics and cryptanalysis. And this is an unsupervised session. There's two types of training, supervised and unsupervised. Supervised is like you give it the answer. You feed it like millions of images of cats and dogs, for example. But for each image, you tell it this is a cat, this is a dog. And then over time, it will learn to identify images of cats or dogs without you telling it the answer. But initially, you need to guide it by saying, all right, this image is a dog, this image is a cat. What unsupervised means is you don't give it the answer. You don't tell it what's correct, what's not. And it kind of has to learn or figure out what are the patterns in this data. So you can see some use cases for supervised learning would be image classification, labeling images. This is a cat, this is a dog. Or spam email detection. You give it emails and you tell it, all right, this is spam, this is not spam. And eventually it will learn to pick up what types of emails are spam versus not spam. Unsupervised learning is more for like classifying data. So here's clustering, for example, it's grouping similar data points together or anomaly detection. So identifying unusual patterns or outliers in data, for example, credit card frauds. So anyways, it was trained using unsupervised learning. It was trained with a data set of lots of articles in statistics and cryptanalysis. And then it analyzed millions of plain text and ciphertext pairs from various crypto systems. So it analyzed millions of pairs of regular text and the encrypted version of that text. Via a ciphertext only attack, it provided a plain text from a given AES192 ciphertext in a way we do not yet fully understand. So after learning, it was able to decipher an encrypted text back into plain text. The encryption was using AES, Advanced Encryption Standard 192, and it was able to decipher that and give the plain text version of that back to the scientists in a way they did not fully understand. So first of all, this sentence, if true, can be catastrophic to society because encryption is the foundation of our society. Everything depends on encryption. Our Wi-Fi networks, our passwords, our credit cards, our private messages, private government data, company data, the stock market, literally everything digital depends on cryptography. Everything is encrypted. So if you develop an AI that is able to decrypt everything, then literally society would collapse. The stock market would collapse. The internet would fail to function. And how it was able to do this is by using Tau Analysis, which achieved Project Tundra's alleged goal. So what is Tau Analysis and Project Tundra? So if you scroll down in this document, which I'll link to in the description below, a user explains what is Project Tundra and what is Tau Analysis. So Project Tundra is a confidential project by the National Security Agency of the USA to basically find ways to hack or decrypt these advanced encryption algorithms. And the NSA, they were investigating this potentially new technique called the Tau Statistic to hack these AES systems. So this part basically says we've achieved the goal of NSA's Project Tundra with this AI. This AI was able to decrypt this AES encryption system. So someone informed someone at NSAC the following day after confirming that the result was indeed legitimate and had not been achieved in any other way. So what is NSAC? Again, if you scroll down in the comment section of the 4chan post, NSAC stands for National Security Agency Colorado, which is the location that is closest to San Francisco where the OpenAI team is located. So this thing is so dangerous or so severe that they were working with the National Security Agency. And then this paragraph was blacked out. And then it says, a claimed full pre-image vulnerability for the MD cryptographic hash function, etc., etc., was also presented but has not 
yet been thoroughly evaluated due to the technical sophistication of its arguments and possible AES vulnerabilities being a considerably more pressing concern. So they also found a vulnerability for another cryptographic function called the MD5, but it hasn't been thoroughly evaluated yet due to it being more difficult. Plus, this discovery, this AI being able to break this AES encryption, being a more pressing concern. So, in summary, again, the basically, this document seems to be a thread of the top AI scientists at OpenAI talking about this QSTAR project where they discovered an AI that was able to learn and improve by itself, it exhibited cross-domain learning, and it was able to decrypt these advanced encryption algorithms, which is fundamental to our society functioning. So, you know, if this is released, it could cause total chaos on society. Now, all right, this seems like a very bold claim, so how legitimate is this? Again, just be aware that this document exists. We don't know if this is true or not, there's no verified evidence to prove whether this is true or false. But here's what the comments say. It seems no one is really saying anything technically wrong with the document. They say it's strangely technically accurate and alarming, more than Anons think. Anons are basically users on 4chan. And then here they go on and explain what all those technical terms mean. But basically the consensus is it's very well written, it's technically correct. This does seem like it's a thread between top AI experts. So you can see the way that they talk, it's very objective, it's very data-driven. There's no emotions involved. It's just, we did this, we did that, we found this, we found that. It's very short and concise. They used a lot of abbreviations because, I mean, this is part of a thread, so there's no need to do a lot of explaining. If this were a troll, that person would have to have a lot of knowledge to write this out. A normal person wouldn't be able to write such a detailed, in-depth document out to troll the world. And here's some more evidence to support that this might be true. After Sam was rehired as the CEO, a few days after that, he was asked about this QSTAR leak. Now, of course, he didn't say anything about it, he couldn't comment on it, but he described it as an unfortunate leak. So he didn't deny it. If this whole thing was false, he could have just said it was false. He could have said this is total BS, but instead he calls it an unfortunate leak. So did he just admit that this was true? Like four times now in the history of OpenAI, the, the most recent time was just in the last couple of weeks. I've gotten to be in the room um, when we sort of like push the front, the sort of the veil of ignorance back and the frontier of discovery forward. And getting to do that is like the professional honor of a lifetime. This was Sam talking at the Apex Summit, and this video was streamed on November 16th, literally the day before he was fired. He says, four times in the history of OpenAI, he was in the room, he was part of the moment where they pushed the veil of ignorance back and the frontier of discovery forward. Now, Sam's a pretty calm guy. He's not going to use words like, oh, this is a mind-blowing discovery or a groundbreaking discovery, you know? He he's not going to use those terms, right? So by him saying they pushed the frontier of discovery forward, whatever he witnessed in those events was very monumental. He witnessed something that had never been seen before. It pushed the frontier forward. Could this be referring to the QSTAR document? Remember, he said that the most recent one was only a few weeks ago. This was on November 16th. That most recent event could have caused the board to fire him. Some more plausible evidence that this document or this QSTAR project isn't just total BS. In Elon Musk's most recent lawsuit against OpenAI, now keeping in mind this is a legal document, so the things that he claim in this document has to be backed up by some evidence. He can't just BS anything in this document. Interestingly, even this lawsuit mentions QSTAR. On information and belief, OpenAI is currently developing a model known as QSTAR that has an even stronger claim to AGI. On information and belief, Mr. Altman's firing was due in part to OpenAI's breakthrough in realizing AGI. In fact, news reports suggested that there was a rift among OpenAI board members and executives regarding safety concerns and the potential threat posed by OpenAI's next generation Q star. 
What is this potential threat and safety concern? Again, is it referring to this document? Nobody can verify right now, but for Elon Musk to put this in his lawsuit, which is a legal document, again, he has to have some backing to write this out. He can't just BS things in this legal document. So that is all the information that we know up to now. Why was Sam Altman fired? Could it be because of his sister's allegations of sexual abuse? Not likely. Could it be due to some power play between him and Helen Toner? Again, not likely. That wouldn't be severe enough to get him fired. And again, going back to the meme, what did Ilya see? What caused him to join sides with Helen Toner and fire Sam Altman? What event spooked him so much that he switched sides? It seems like the most plausible explanation for this is this Q-Star document. It explains why the board had to slam the brakes. It explains why the board couldn't say anything about it. Their only response was he was not consistently candid with the board. They couldn't expose this even to internal employees because this was the only moral thing to do. I mean, how could they expose such a dangerous secret? Now, this is only part one of the story. Part two is Elon Musk filing a lawsuit against OpenAI. With this lawsuit, he's basically legally forcing OpenAI to reveal what this Q-Star project is actually about. So things are going to get really, really interesting. And actually, for my next video, I'm going to do an in-depth explanation on the lawsuit and what we know so far. If you've watched this far... First of all, thank you for listening to me ramble for 40 minutes. And let me know in the comments what you think of this whole story. What do you think was the reason Sam Altman got fired? Do you think this Q-Star document is legit or not? And how do you think this story will play out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.